All right, hey guys, welcome back. All right, well, here in front of you, you see my visual CNC control panel. This is the control panel software and the Win CNC controller that came with my, uh, my desktop tower, with the machine, and this is what actually runs the CAD software, and this is what enables your designs and your tool paths to communicate properly with the actual router itself, okay? Now I told you, and I'm not going to make you sit through it, initialize your machine, okay? It brings everything back to your starting corner, okay? And what we want to do is if you want to find out what is the maximum area of travel, okay? We'll take, and I'm hoping you can see the mouse moving around. We're going to come down to the Y, okay? We're going to move the machine all the way forward. Please excuse the noise while it's running, all right? As I get close to my end, I slow it down because I don't want to crash my gantry, all right? If you ever want to find out what your overall maximum distance is, okay, bang. Right here it says force limit exceeded. We have gone and we have done maximum travel. I would recommend on a slip of paper or write it down. I've written it on my wall in a couple spots in the shop, okay? Maximum y-axis travel is 50.249 inches. Write that down somewhere, okay? Great. The next thing we want to do is we want to know, and remember the y-axis is the maximum length that run, run length of the machine, okay? We want to know what is now the width, okay? We're going to do the same thing on the x. So we're going to, uh, we're going to go across. We'll, we'll skip diddly do here in high speed, but as I get close to the end, all right, we're going to, we're going to slow it down. You don't want to go crashing your gantry. You don't want, to, don't want to jar those stepper motors or chip a gear on the track or you don't want to do your machine any damage, all right? And we're going to go little by little until we see another force limit. Okay. We have our force limit exceed switch with 39.231 inches on our x axis. This is the maximum rate of travel. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinitialize and bring the machine back to zero. Okay. Z-axis is going to do its thing real quick, okay, and we're going to let it reset. Now while it's resetting, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up a copy of eCarve Pro, okay? We're going to pull up our CAD software, and we are now going to create our program to do our spoiler board. Okay, now, our job setup. We know that the maximum width is 39.23 inches. Well, as we measured previously, 37 inches is our spoiler board. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go that extra half inch, okay, on each side. So we're going to cut this at 38.0 inches on our X and on our Y. Now, I told you that my machine, you just saw it, it maxes out at 50.249 inches on the y-axis. However, I only want to mill those top three uh, spoiler plates, okay, spoiler boards. So what I did was I measured up from the start of where my machine's going to reinitialize, okay, and it looks as though she, she has reinitialized, okay. I know that right off the top of my head to the center of that track I'm 48 inches okay now the reason I don't mill into the next spoiler board over is just I, I don't need to, to mar it up I just don't need that little extra two inch bit of a room I've really never had a call for it so I don't bother with it okay so 38 by 48 okay now I showed you where to measure, okay? I showed you where to mark on the top of your spoiler board. Half of 37 is 18.5. Half of 48 in this case is 24, okay? Because we want the extra. We don't want a little lip or rim left around the, uh, the edges of the spoiler board itself. 
That's why we're going to make the program a little bit oversized, all right? We go into our tool pass. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to come over to create vectors. We're going to draw a rectangle. Start in whatever corner you want and build your rectangle. All right, there you go. 38 by 48. We're going to apply that. Once it's applied, we're going to close it. Pull up your pocketing toolpath function. Okay. Now, I've already got my end mill. Uh, we don't need to show advanced toolpath options because the only thing you're doing here is you're, you're just milling the top of your board. You don't, you don't need any, any advanced steps here. I've got my 1.5 inch spoiler board bit in. Okay, I'm going to look at the edit tool function. For this, I run, uh, I run the router at 12,000 RPMs. It is MDF, so I'm going to run this at about 120 inches per minute on my feed rate. Plunge rate is the speed of how fast the router goes down. Okay? And my step over is actually a little bit more than 50%. It's actually at 65%. Okay. And basically what your step over is, is each consequential path that the spoiler board bit goes is how far over it's going to step over 65% on the next pass, okay? 50 is, is, is all right, too. This is MDF, all right? We're going to okay that. The next thing is, is, is where, do you want to, where do you want to start from? If you go to the conventional, uh, it's going to basically run either clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, climb and conventional. Uh, I run conventional. Now you have the choice between an offset or a raster. If you run the raster, what's going to happen is you're going to go back and forth on your X, okay? Yeah, you can most certainly do it that way. Your offset is where you're going to start from the center and you're going to work your way to the, the outer, outermost edges, all right? This is the one I prefer to use, okay? This is just me. Okay, you can actually call it a pocket and you could name it, you could name it spoiler board. Okay, now in our job setup, I've told you many times, uh, I, my datum starting position, I always start in the middle. That's just how I do it. Okay, our units of measurement here in the United States are inches. If you're somewhere else, it's, it's millimeters, it's metric. Okay. Uh, my thickness is 750 thousandths. We okay it. Now, you've touched top. You found center either with a laser crosshair or you put in your little, your little 60 degree V-bit and you've used your V-bit in the event you don't have a laser crosshair. Like I said, it's the extra step, but it does work, okay? You got your center. We're going to now calculate your tool path. Oh my goodness, we gotta, we got to light up the, uh, the rectangular box, excuse me, and now we hit calculate, okay? We can come over to the preview of the tool pass, okay? With our 1.5, we'll reset the image, and we're going to preview all tool pass, okay? There is your one and a half inch spoiler board bit working. Now, the one thing I will do here is I think I'll change the color just so you guys can see it a little bit better. We'll use, uh, we'll use a solid color and we'll use, we'll use white. Okay. All right, let's reset that image and let's try it again. Oh my goodness. We can't see that one that well either. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll set our tool path color. Uh, and we'll set that to black. Okay. Let's reset, try this again. All right. I work from my center out. And because I have taken, okay, because I have taken and I have made my dimensions larger than the actual surface area I want to mill, I am assured that that way there, I'm not going to have any little lip. Like I said, it's MDF. If you had to, you could always always kiss it real quick with a little, little bit of uh, 
or a little sanding and uh, it'd knock it right down real, real, real quick, okay? Well, this is pretty much it. This is what's involved. Now, the other thing I'm going to tell you, okay, we're not going to bother saving this. The other thing I'm going to bother telling you is once you find center, okay, now, I'm going to turn my laser on real quick, and I'm going to step out of the, uh, the limelight here for just a second. I'm going to move my gantry up to the center of the material. This is just another little trick we're going to give you real quick. Okay, I'm going to come over, and I'm going to turn my laser on, okay? Okay. Now, in the case of me having a laser, as I told you guys before, this is basically the center of the material where I want to mill, okay? I am going to set my laser for laser X0, Y0. Okay, now, you notice these little green boxes right here. These are the resets from where you just re-origined the machine. However, underneath them, are the actual measurements. All right? Now, you can always take and you can also write those down. Your spoiler board is never going to change in size. You're not going to make it wider than it is. You're not going to make it any longer than it is. Your spoiler board is always going to be a constant, okay? Write those measurements down. This is, this is just a hypothetical example, okay? The middles of the machines are going to vary from machine to machine, okay? Take on your controller because your controller will always have your reoriginated uh, X and Y axis setting in the green, but the red is where the machine originally initialized from, okay? This will, in fact, be your starting points, okay? So going forward, you won't have to worry about finding center if you've got X and Y written down. The only thing at that point you'll have to do is touch top with your z-axis and your spoiler board bit and you're pretty much good to go okay well guys i hope this helped you guys out again if you ever have any questions please shoot us an email steve at little little woodshop you can connect with us on the funny pages and facebook uh... twitter google plus we're, we're all over the place all right and again my subscribers my followers guys thank you very 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 much all right i really appreciate you uh following me, subscribing, the support, and if this video was helpful and you liked it, hey, please give me a thumbs up. All right, guys? You guys, take care. I got to get ready for some free food and football. All right. You guys are awesome. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.